want to say thank you so much to every single one of us in this room right now. There's something that happened when I stepped into this space. I felt seen. I felt a sense of community. I felt like this is a safe space. And I look around and I see everyone committed to supporting this cause that this organization stands for. And for that singular act, can we give ourselves a round of applause? Thank you so much, everyone who is here today. So um, for the past 20 years, I've been in the work of social justice. I'm an attorney. Um, I primarily represent immigrants in the United States, and I also do criminal defense work. And I have the honor and privilege of meeting this incredible young woman, Jaira Ishazi, a couple of years ago. And I was blown away with her conviction and the fact that she followed up with a drive and opened this nonprofit. We are here for the second annual friend Vassery, a friend fundraiser, our friend, Jaira said it's a friend raiser. It is a friend raiser. <laughs> and we're here to support Outside Mind. Outside Minds is a nonprofit organization that Jaira founded a couple of years ago. When I was looking at the website, because I've attended a couple of functions for Outside Mind, when I was looking on the web website, I loved the fact that Outside Mind represented a space that fostered unity, that fostered acceptance for people who are historically left out. I loved that. And when I came into this space, I looked around and I'm like, that tells me that everyone in this space supports this cause. So this is peace for me. So it says in its mission statement that Outside Mind is dedicated to fostering equitable outdoor recreation access and opportunity for racially underserved communities to enjoy nature. Every one of us in this room understands what nature does. Nature heals. Nature revitalizes. Nature rejuvenates. And green spaces and blue spaces in the Commonwealth, the fact that Jaira was able to bring this opportunity, make it possible for people who live in the fringes or who are historically marginalized to enjoy the natural wonders of Massachusetts just makes me so happy. So, so when she contacted me, I'm like, absolutely, I wanna be a part of this. So without further ado, I wanna recognize the presence of each and every one of us and say thank you for being here. Leaders in the community, I see my dear friend, um, Nicole McLean, the first ever black female city councilor from Lynn, Massachusetts. A round of applause for, for Nicole. And we have a lot of community leaders and friends here tonight. And our guest speaker, Paul Janige, is also going to join us shortly. So ladies and gentlemen, let me, have, let me tell you something. There's something that happens when we come into spaces like this. So I'm going to challenge you tonight. You're going to make two friends. I didn't say one. I said two for a reason. You're going to say hello to someone who is next to you. You get their social, um, you, you get their phone number, you get their contact, social media contact, and you follow through. I say to young women that I mentor that the difference between people who are hugely successful and the rest of the other people is your network. Networks equal net worth. So get the numbers, get the social media contact, and follow through. So once again, a round of applause to all of us here this evening. So we're gonna jump into the program. We will be serenaded by 
the amazing Jante Samuel, who is going to take the stage right now to serenade us with the saxophone. Woo! Thank you. 
for that. <laughs> Woo. Okay, so next on our schedule tonight, I'm excited for this, we have a welcome cultural performance by a group of dancers from Rwanda. It's called the Rwandis Welcome Performance. Are they here? Come on out.
Almost ancestral. Oh, round of applause for them. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. Thank you so much, Uwachu Troop. Um, so the next thing on our agenda tonight is a sharing of experience by Kemi and Diego of what the outside mind means for them. They will share perspectives and experiences and insights of what this organization has done or what the organization means to them. So without much ado, um, can we welcome Cami and Diego to the stage. Well, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. And first of all, I want to say a big thank you to Jaira for the opportunity to share my experience with Outside Mind. So back in 2021, I joined the, um, the Empty Nester Mom Club. And I know I look so young, but I'm way, way older than I look. Um, <laughs> And so, and that was a, as a result of my daughter going to college and my son going to boarding school. So I suddenly had a lot of free time on my hand. And I decided, okay, what am I supposed to be doing now with my time? And I decided that, okay, I wanna try new things. I wanna try new things for myself, enjoy myself, because I've been raising kids for the past 21 years. So um, I, um, and before that, I actually loved the beach. Um, so that was the only outdoor activity that I did. And that was only in the summer. In Massachusetts, you only have three months of summer. And even with those summer months, you only have, get to get maybe like two or three beach days because the water is cold. So that was the extent of my outdoor activities. So I was like, okay, let me look for more things. So because I love water, I learned how to kayak. So after having that lesson, I enjoyed it so much. And I joined Meetup. And I saw this kayaking event on um, Meetup, and it was called Color the River. I was like, hmm, that's, another, that's a kayaking event. I would like to go to that one. But I reluctantly joined because that would be my first time going for an activity with people I didn't know. Um, usually when I, um, like even over the years now, I would go for an activity and my kids will ask me, who are you going with? And I'll tell them I'm going with strangers. <laughs> so. Um, so, but before I embarked on that one, I was very reluctant, but I joined, I went, and I enjoyed it so much. Um, so that was my first time really kayaking with um, a group of people and then doing the Ipswich River. It was on the Ipswich River, which was a little challenging, but very rewarding. Um, there was even a portion of that trip where we experienced a big rapid, and I could not make it through. Like, <laughs> everyone else went through, but I could not. So I turned back. But I went far enough, I enjoyed it, it was a big challenge, and the instructors were very great, they were awesome. I met Jaira then, and um, she was so nice, so kind, and um, the food was good. So that was my first experience, and I was like, ah, now I'm an outsider, I'm an outdoor person, 
So from then on, I joined two other events. It was the Essex River Cruise and also a ski trip to Vermont. And that was my best, um, one of my best ones. Um, that was when I learned how to ski. And um, again, I am so grateful for that opportunity. Um, again, I met a lot of good, great people. It was a lovely time. I was very reluctant to join that one too because it was a trip with people I didn't know to another state. And I was like, how am I gonna do that? And, they, and again, my kids was questioning me and they're like, how are you going on a trip with people you don't know? But I did it and um, I'm glad I did. And now I have my ski outfit and I'm ready for my next ski adventure and other winter activities. So joining Outside Mine afforded me the opportunity to um, really um, enjoy, begin to enjoy the outdoors. And um, the fact that we live in New England, one of the things that I've always said is there's nothing to do here, um, but now I've come to appreciate all four seasons. Usually in the cold weather, I've always holed up with my family in the house, but now all seasons I can do something outside. Um, and that's because, again, of the opportunity that um, I was afforded. And I've expanded my outdoor adventures to hiking, um, to, um, what else do I do? Um, to um, hiking, even in the cold and in the warm weather, and um, many other things, like getting outside every opportunity I have to go walk in. And um, so joining up, being part of Outside Mind has helped me to truly embrace the outdoors. And one of the benefits I've gotten is, um, as I've been going outside more, more mental clarity. Um, it has helped me to be more strong, more fit, and um, help me with my weight loss goals. And also, um, being able to like, just get my vitamin D naturally and for my health. And um, so, and, but one of the challenges I've faced um, ever since embarking on outdoors is the fact that I usually never find anyone to go with. Um, again, with my friend group, none of them always wanna come because again, I have been afforded an opportunity that they haven't been exposed to so that it's been very hard to get them to come. So that's why I keep going with strangers. But <laughs> what I've done is to begin to invite them and also even plan my own activities so that they can be a part of it. And slowly but surely, they're coming along. So um, th that is great. And so the lack of opportunities for people of color or the lack of exposure is one of the things that still exists. Even like with um, higher class um, people of color, um, it's just because of a lack of exposure, not because of the lack of money. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say that uh, I'm not well-to-do. I'm a little well-to-do, thankfully, um, but it was just because of a lack of exposure, education, that I wasn't even doing those things. Um, so it is something that still exists and needs to be addressed. And I'm thankful for organizations like um, Outside Mind um, that will continue to like bring that awareness to people and also um, maybe be an example and showcase what it means to be outside and what the benefits are like I have um, experienced and um, so like going further what else did I write in my note <laughs> um, so the benefits I've, I've experienced as I ventured more are very numerous like I said and um, I think a lot of people will benefit from that um, it's very very rewarding to be outside um, like you mentioned earlier um, just the the clarity um, being happy and um, it just changes things like some of my friends that I introduced to walking um, they it's like they started it and they're like wow like I didn't know I could feel this way and now they're going out walking um, all the time because they see the benefits. Um, so it's very important. And so now I see the importance of supporting organizations like this, um, whether financially or whether by volunteering. And, um, um, and hopefully, um, another thing I wanna point out is the fact that if you have kids and um, they've not been exposed to the outdoors, this is a time to start. Maybe taking them out or even putting them in lessons, kayak lessons, ski lessons. If, if you don't like the outdoors, introduce them to it because it's going to benefit them in the long run. And um, I grew up in an African household and I was never afforded that opportunity. And I think it's a great opportunity for um, kids because when they become teenagers, they don't want to do anything with you anymore. They want to hang out with their friends. So that's the problem I'm having now. So start them young and um, it will benefit them in the future and I want to say thank you so much Jaira for the opportunity once again and um, 
I'm looking forward to paying it forward and I'm offering my own support in my own way I'm going forward. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing so powerfully, Cami. Thank you. Diego, let's go. younger members <laughs> so um, I think Cammy and I were actually part of the same first uh, event that we ever did um, that was in the Ipswich River and um, she was a little bit young so we didn't feel quite comfortable getting her in the kayak but honestly um, I think it's been really amazing to be able to do events like this um, my wife and I are uh, not from Massachusetts, we're from Florida, and all of our family is in Florida, so it's been really hard to like, um, want to, first want to do some of these things, because it's like, oh, it's too cold, or, <laughs> you know, but uh, getting used to the weather, um, but also just in general, um, feeling away from home and having that, um, that struggle of trying to find community and trying to build, um, a network here and outside mine has been a, a great way for us to, to be able to do that. And um, even though we were uh, strangers at first, uh, it's been able to uh, give us at least that sense of, of belonging that we've been uh, feeling like we've been missing. Um, and most recently we went to kayak and you can see the difference <laughs> in age there. Um, and being from Florida, we're generally comfortable with the water, but it's something else trying to get a toddler in a kayak with you. <laughs> and so we actually were pretty nervous. Um, we weren't sure, like, oh, how are we going to do this? Like, are we going to get, like, single kayaks? Are we going to get double kayaks? Like, how are we going to make this work? <laughs> and the really great thing was that we were able to be in a space where you know, it, it was okay to not know how exactly we were gonna make this work because we felt comfortable enough to have someone to be able to guide us through. And, um, you know, that was a really, really cool experience. Um, it was definitely a little bit of a learning moment for, or teaching moment for my wife and I <laughs> in parenting and dealing with the unknown and dealing with, you know, um, a little bit of our own nervousness and, um, I think it was really cool to be able to do that, and at the end, um, you know, it, it was like she was born in the water, like, <laughs> she just, at one point, uh, she wanted to jump out of the kayak, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it's been really cool, and I think um, that sense of, you know, feeling like, you know, we're in a new area, we're in a new space, but also being able to feel like, you know, we're still part of this community, which is, you know, really, really exciting. So, um, thank you so much for, for everything you do and for, you know, creating this space for us to, to feel welcomed and, and uh, feel like we're part of something. Oh. That was wonderful, Diego. Thank you for sharing. Um, there was something you spoke to, and Kemi also spoke, spoke to that point, the point of fostering community. So I said to my clients, um, I have a lot of clients who are genuinely scared with what might unfold in the next couple of months, next couple of years. Um, and you know, all of us are genuinely scared. And I said to my clients, I, think, I feel like I've been saying it all week, we have each other, we have one another, and when we foster communities and spaces like this, then, then we defeat anything. We become unconquerable when we're a community and when we act united. So you spoke about that, Diego. It reminds me of what our roles will be in the next couple of months 
we're going to have to hunker down whether or not we like it. But we're, we're called for times like this is what I've been saying um, this week. I've been saying it even with my voice shaking a little bit, but I feel like we're all called for times like this. And the work and the space this organization creates is, it has a ripple effect and we will rise to the occasion. And so Kenny and Diego, thank you. One more round of applause for them. So our guest speaker for tonight is Paul Janigi. Paul is the director of the Massachusetts Office of Outdoor Recreation. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the amazing work Paul does in our state, in our Commonwealth. So Paul Janigi serves as the inaugural director of the Massachusetts Office of Outdoor Recreation more. And this office is within the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. In his capacity, Paul works across state government and the private sector to promote all things outdoor recreation in Massachusetts. Prior to this role with Moore, Paul had worked for over 20 years with the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation, most of that time in the greenways and the trails section planning, a building, construction, and reconstruction of all kinds of trails across the Commonwealth. Paul has a master's degree in environmental studies and lives with his family in Williamsburg, Massachusetts. And Paul takes every opportunity to play outside in the Bay State. Let us give a resounding round of applause for Paul. Thank you. I am, I am really thrilled to be here uh, at this event tonight celebrating equity and belonging in, in the outdoors. Uh, as you said, I am Paul. I am from Moore. As I like to say, Moore is better. Um, Moore was launched only about a little more than a year ago under the Healy Driscoll administration, not just to promote all things outdoor recreation, uh, but also to really focus on making sure that all residents um, and visitors have access to and feel welcome in all of our outdoor recreation spaces, places, and activities. Um, Massachusetts was the 18th state to establish an Office of Outdoor Recreation, so we are part of a, of a national movement here, uh, and the, the goal nationally is to create 25 by 25, so we'll see if, if that can happen. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the, the Office of Outdoor Recreation and, and the statewide perspective, and I want to start with sort of why, why? Why do we have an Office of Outdoor Recreation? Why is that important? We've heard some really important things about why outdoor recreation is important, so I just want to hammer a couple of those. The first one from our perspective is about economic development, rural development, community development. And when I say community development, I, just don't, I don't just mean economic development, I also mean the kind of community that, that we're talking about here today. But on the economic side, outdoor recreation contributes about $11 billion to Massachusetts economy. And it creates over 100,000 jobs. So it is a really important uh, economic sector for us. And between uh, 2021 and 2022, it grew in Massachusetts by about 17%. So we're trying to continue that, that growth. I think during the pandemic, we all understood that in times of uh, you know, challenge, we want to get outside. Um, so it's about a strong economy. More importantly, though, it is about public health, and we've already heard that tonight as well. Um, participating in outdoor recreation has uh, specific disease prevention effects. Uh, vitamin D deficiency, my, uh, osteo, uh, uh, osteoarthritis, um, myopia, and it improves things like cardiovascular health, respiratory function, muscle strength. These are diseases that we also spend a lot on in the healthcare system, on drugs and on treatment but we can also get outside and, and uh, uh, see a lot of those benefits. Of course, it's not just about the physical benefits, it's also or physical health, it's also about mental health. Um, time in nature, time in natural spaces, uh, in the woods, on the water, with animals, reduces anxiety, uh, fatigue, depression, while increasing our vigor and our social connections, social connections again. 
And again, in the United States, we spent about $6 billion on antidepressant drugs. We should be getting outside more and maybe reducing drugs a little less. Or maybe we'll take some of that as healthcare dollars and fund programs like this. Um, but most importantly, growing outdoor recreation is about equity and environmental justice, and that's why we're here tonight. Not everybody in Massachusetts has the same access to uh, the same opportunities and access to participate in outdoor recreation. Outdoor recreation sites are not where most of us live. They are often a little bit out there. Uh, and we don't design them for everybody. First of all, we design them for cars, right? Trailheads are often synonymous with parking lots. Uh, river access is synonymous with boat ramps. Uh, public transit doesn't always go there. Um, but even if you have a car, you self-transportation, you get to sites, do you feel welcome? Do you see yourself there? Do others invite you to come? Do your friends invite you to come? Are they there? And all too often, unfortunately, the answer has always been no. Um, I heard Kemi say that she uh, was an outsider. And I, I like that phrase about being a Massachusetts outsider, because we take the feeling of being an outsider and we turn around and we say, let's be an outsider. Um, so that's why I'm, uh, organizations like Outside Mound are so critical in creating affinity spaces, having friends, having people who make you feel welcome, helping in organize transportation and gear, uh, and making sure that people, uh, that the communities and state governments uh, and other outdoor recreation organizations know how important this is and priorities equity, prioritize equity and belonging here. So that's what we're trying to do at the state level. So that is some of the why and now some of the what. Uh, what are we trying to do for outdoor recreation in Massachusetts? Again, this, is, uh, this office has been established for about a year. I am an office of one. So if you think this is an important office, you know, also. Um, so, but we have launched a few initiatives. The first one is uh, a small grants program focused on boosting inclusive and accessible outdoor recreation events. Uh, when we put this out there at uh, uh, the beginning of, of this year, we got an incredible uh, response to it, clearly showing there are a lot of organizations that are really wanting, doing things in this space and needing support to do things in this space. We had about 80 applications. We were able to fund about 21 organizations doing really a diverse set of things around the state from surf therapy with neurodivergent children and families down on Horseneck Beach on the South Shore, um, angler education programs, around the, uh, for um, youth and also uh, uh, young people with disabilities. We funded a, a Nipmuc machine burn and paddle on Lake Quinn Sigamon, so bring some um, cultural uh, uh, knowledge back. And then uh, we also funded uh, Pride on the River and Diversity of Whitewater uh, programs on the Deerfield River in Northwestern Massachusetts. Um, Let me see where I am now. Um, another initiative we were able to do, we were able to take advantage of some of the ARPA dollars flowing into the state and do some targeted investments in outdoor recreation. Specifically, we, are, we offered a grant towards developing destination mountain biking uh, trails in Massachusetts. This is a growing sport. It's a sport that a lot of people are, are learning about, participating in. It's not something we have uh, great public destination trail systems in. So we're trying to support the development of those to bring more people to enjoy that sport in Massachusetts. And then finally last week, uh, with our Secretary of Environment, we launched a Trails for All initiative. This is an initiative focused on trail accessibility and, and improving and expanding trail accessibility, not just uh, paved trails, rail trails, things like that, but also really focusing on natural spaces and access to woodland spaces and natural spaces. We have thousands of miles of trail in Massachusetts. Less than 1% of those meet accessibility standards. And this isn't just about people in wheelchairs, although it is about people who use mobility devices. The estimate is that 33 to 47% of our population benefits from accessible trails, whether those are very young children in strollers and their families trying to get out, elderly folks who have uh, mobility challenges, people recovering from injury or disease, or people with mobility devices or lived, can, lived experience with uh, disabling conditions. 
Uh, the importance of this initiative, we're forming a, a trail uh, working group to really focus on what are the barriers to this, how do we bring resources to it, how do we expand that. We're going to have a third of the representatives of that group be people with lived experience with disabilities. So we're not going to be expanding access for people with disabilities. People with lived experience will be designing uh, accessible trails for all of us. Um, so, you've heard a little bit about the state perspective. We've heard some amazing uh, stories. Uh, you're all here because you all get it, uh, and I want you all to join the movement to be Massachusetts outsiders and help promote this across the state. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Paul. Your office of one seems to be doing quite a bit. <laughs> We're grateful for the work your office is doing for sure. I'm hearing things that I never heard. Um, surf therapy. I mean, what is that? But, but it sounds like something that benefits someone, a demography, right? So um, thank you for the work you do. Um, now, I have to just take a pause and describe this amazing young woman that I will introduce to you. And when I say take a pause, I'm not just trying to be dramatic about who Jaira Ishazi is. In my line of work, I meet a lot of new immigrants. And when you see someone who has a vision and then executes the vision to the T, that person is a leader who was worth commending. Round of applause for Jaira. So Jaira, for your dedication and for your conviction in following through with dreams and goals and things you believe in, we thank you tonight for nurturing the vision of establishing and founding an organization of this magnitude that has provided so much for our communities because I've been on one of those um, events and I savored the sense of community, which is what Paul spoke about, but it is so vital and I had this conversation with a couple of people here tonight about why I am so grateful that I'm in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts because I know that we're fighting everything that's about to come our way like full throttle. We are not gonna relent, right? So Jaira is the founder and director of Outside Mind. This young woman founded this nonprofit in 2021. And her singular goal was to improve outdoor recreation access, equity, and representation for racial minority groups on the North Shore of the Commonwealth. Jaira is an MBA candidate at the Boston University, where she's specializing in social impact studies. She lives here in Salem. And Jaira values community service. The first thing I noticed when I encountered her a couple of years ago. She loves to volunteer with a few organizations like the Root Not Sure, the Not Sure Juneteenth Association, which was actually where we met, as well as the Essex County Greenbelt Association. Ladies and gentlemen, can we give a resounding round of applause for Jaira? Thank you, Ogre. Good evening, friends. It's very nice to see all of you here. Thank you for joining us today. Um, well, this picture right here, uh, I, I put it here purposefully because this was actually the first time my sister and I went for kayaking in Ipswich um, at a local pond. Um, but I really wanted to touch on the importance of bridging the gap to access. 
um, a friend of ours, a family friend called Mary Lou. She's a, she's a white lady and helped my family to settle here. Uh, my family is right over there. My, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, the Davis family, my dad, Reverend Dr. Allen, and my mom, Lena, and sister Jemima. And um, actually today is Jemima's birthday and I, I convinced her to come here to, <laughs> to celebrate with us. So thank you for joining. Yeah, so Mary Lou really reflecting on my journey to start this and build community. We moved here in 2020, uh, not so long ago. So I still see myself um, as a new American and um, it was such a tough time, not only were we in COVID and the pandemic, but, but we were also settling in as a family and um, trying to explore uh, spaces. And so Mary Lou would come to our house in Ipswich and give us a ride and um, tour beaches and um, state parks around, and it really helped us in staying grounded and um, with a lot of stress and uncertainty that was around in 2020 and also a lot of racial injustices. Um, really being outside and connecting to nature really helped us to go through such a difficult time. And so Mary Lou, I was thinking about the importance of allyship and bridging the gap uh, she saw a family that needed this, and um, it didn't cost her much to give us a ride. Uh, we didn't know how to get around, but her contribution really inspired me, seeing the benefits of nature and um, how it really helped me to go through that difficult time and really develop a love of nature and the outdoors. Um, back home in Uganda, I remember visiting the countryside with my family from time to time, and uh, I could see that change in uh, mental health and excitement, seeing mountains and different vegetation. So definitely, nature has always been a part of me growing up, and I've always appreciated green spaces and um, the countryside and um, the beauty that comes with that. And so, um, next slide, please. I wanted to share a little bit about my leadership journey through this work. Um, I started, of course, uh, this was 2021, when I had a lot of self-discovery and I was growing in my purpose. And as a young leader, the first picture there was my first public speech in Boxford. It was um, a rally for racial justice and uh, sharing my perspective as a new American and um, all the char challenges I was facing and uh, really a call to action. And um, Outside Mind was actually born in nature. I was taking a walk and um, I really oftentimes found myself as the only person of color in nature, and I still do. On a good day, maybe I see like one other person who is a person of color in nature, and that really disturbed me, and um, I really wanted to make a difference in that, not only because a, a lack of representation directly means a lack of access. It means there is a certain group of people that are not able to access these same opportunities that are very beneficial to all of us. And so really increasing representation means more people are able to benefit from um, nature. And so I went on to join uh, with the help of mentors around me. I joined IFORO, which is an business development organization that helps emerging leaders and entrepreneurs and people with ideas to put them together. So I enrolled in a three-month program and um, 
with mentors on my side, I, I, I developed this. And um, I, I actually graduated with Nicole. <laughs> yeah, um, in 2022. And really that is how Outside Mind was born. Um, I believe you need, not only do you need a vision, but you really need to be guided uh, and put systems in place so that uh, things are more sustainable. And um, really, that has been my journey up until this point, uh, learning on the way. It really takes courage to do this, um, but I, I didn't want to be among the people who just, you know, cross my hands and uh, not do anything about the inequities and um, inequalities I was seeing in my community. So with courage, I was determined to gather the few resources I had and just start. And um, surely it has been a great and amazing experience uh, being able to gather groups and friends that first start out as strangers and then become friends. Um, so it has really been a rewarding experience for me um, so that we can open up more opportunities for others. Uh, belonging is really very important because friends, we, we are all looking for the same things in life if you, if you think about it. Uh, white, black, we are, we are really all in, in this journey of life. Uh, we all deserve the same opportunities to thrive and, and move ahead. And so really the fight of racial justice and any other injustice, it, it's to really see that we can all uh, move together and leave no one behind. It's really that drive to see that groups that are neglected really can, can really uh, benefit from the opportunities that we have around us. And so, um, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, this year I wanted to highlight two opportunities we did. This was our first ski opportunity this year in January. We put together a group of first-time skiers and we went all the way to Vermont, uh, Kemi and, um, and uh, a friend of ours uh, there joined us and it was really great. All of us were first timers in this and so there was that sense of community it's really very scary to tr <laughs> to, to try this especially for older people one of my fears is um falling down and w whenever it's winter i, I really I, I don't want to fall or slide <laughs> so but trust me we had a, a number of falls and it was <laughs> It was embarrassing seeing like young kids really masters at, and, but it really opened our eyes like, hey, young kids are really exposed to these opportunities when they are really young and really that's how they build their skills. And so in communities of color, most of us, it's never the case. We, we start out things later on in life and it's, it's a challenge to, to, to break break out of that mold and um, the fears you have to try new things. Um, we've had participants who have tried kayaking for the first time, really the, getting over that fear of getting into the water and uh, the unknown. It's one of the things that make people shy away from, from adventure, which requires skill, but really this turned out to be a great experience for all of us. And um, we plan to do it again in January, uh, take out a group of 15 to 20 people. And, um, but really such an opportunity is really expensive with equipment, um, trainers. We really rely on philanthropic support to make sure that people have these opportunities uh, free of charge to them, um, and they are able to learn new skills in the outdoors. Um, another opportunity I wanted to highlight this year, next slide please, is uh, we had a partnership with the Essex County Greenbelt 
association where I volunteer on the DEI committee. Um, we partnered with Live for Education, which is an organization that supports underserved students on the North Shore. And so we took them out uh, for two field trips um, in Essex and Hamilton. And it was a great experience them getting to learn about the environment and different ecosystems and really also an opportunity to be out in nature. Most of these kids don't have a lot of exposure to really abundant green spaces. Um, so it was really a great opportunity for us to work together on this project to see them out enjoying nature and, and learning more. And uh, one of the projects we want to continue to do thoughtfully is engaging the student population, but really underserved students, um, and really focusing on opportunities like this. And so uh, in the next two years, we, we are focusing on increasing community engagement for new Americans. It's really very important for them to to explore, like myself, when I was studying out new Americans or immigrants um, do not have, they find it challenging to, to explore new places and um, having those opportunities designed for them to, to be out in nature, it really helps in their thriving and then um, also communities of color, those are our two focus areas, um, immigrants and communities of color, seeing how we can expand opportunities for them to adventure and connect to the outdoors while building opportunity, uh, community. And so I really want to thank you all for joining us here and uh, supporting us in this journey. Um, as a young leader, it's, it's, it's not easy to continue to do this, um, it, it takes courage to, to keep going. We rely on philanthropic dollars and we are really committed to offering these opportunities uh, free of charge to our participants so that we can get more people engaged in these um, opportunities. So thank you so much again for coming here and learning more uh, you can always connect with us, and uh, we, are, we are open to engaging and having conversations on how we can continue to grow this and to engage these communities. So thank you so much once again. Chaira. Chaira. Thank you so much. Um, Jaira spoke powerfully, and there's something that I want to stress. Everyone here tonight, this organization is relying on donations from all of us. However, we can donate um, to support the causes that Outside Mind is invested in. There's a silent auction actually going on, and I apologize, I should have stress that at the beginning. <laughs> please, 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 um, courtesy of Patagonia and New England Running com Company, it's right there at the back, please take advantage and please donate and support to keep organizations like this that do incredible work um, to continue investing in their mission. Jaira. Thank you so much. <laughs> so we're almost concluding and we're gonna call out those girls, beautiful girls with the ancestral dance to entertain us one more time and then we will round up. Are they coming, Jaira? Okay, great. So I hear them, okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Edore twenze twenza garyoshe ariko garanyo gahona reza gusa umuti mutuje umuti mukeye uoni we dusangira kuri nangi wacu ni Rwanda we nakai So muri che muri wacu na rwango yabande nabantu beza beza kusa ganyoke ganyoke we naka ganyoka barungiya ira itwabivuganye ho bande itwabigiye winama ganyoke ganyoke we naka One more. That was wonderful, ladies. Watch a cultural troupe all the way from Rwanda. A round of applause for them. We all just got a little workout for the evening, so that was good. <laughs> so I had one ask at the beginning of this event. I said to everyone in this room, make two friends. I didn't say one. I said two. This is your last chance <laughs> to talk to your neighbor and get their numbers and contacts and social media handle and follow up. I'm telling you we're going to need each other in the coming months. I'm not even joking. <laughs> okay. So, um, wow, what a wonderful, wonderful event. Um, um, so um, eloquently and flawlessly executed by outside minds. I am just so happy to be in the presence of this group. Because like I said in the beginning, there's a singular thread that connects all of us. The sense of community, the fact that we support one another and uplift things like this speaks volume as to who is in this room. And for that, one more round of applause for us. So, um, did I say about the silent auction? Okay. Have you done it? The silent ox. Okay. That is one more reminder about the silent ox. And DJ Ravino will be giving us a music freestyle 
and um, we're winding down. Your support makes a difference. Thank you everyone for coming this night and have a fantastic night.